If you were to tell me a year ago that I would be at the coffee box with people from my high school other than Meg and Dave, I would have rolled my eyes at you. Meg and Dave were my best friends, and nothing could take that away from me. If you were to tell me a year ago that one of those girls would be a cheerleader and the other girl would be into chess, I would have actually laughed at you. Cheerleaders never gave me the time of day, and chess? It might as well have been a foreign language to me. If you were to tell me a year ago that the girl who was a cheerleader would be holding the cup to my mouth, helping me drink my green tea, I would have told you to go to the emergency room because you were having irrational thoughts. Well, I would have been wrong to do all that to you, because here we were, Amy, Tony, and me, hanging out at our typical Thursday night spot, the coffee box, a local cafe with paintings all over the walls and an enormous ceramic shoe hanging from the ceiling. Guess what tomorrow is? Amy slurped her frappuccino from a straw. Your boyfriend's coming. How excited are you? I smiled at her. Tommy. Tommy, my boyfriend. For the first time in my life, I could say I had an actual boyfriend. I could not wait until he was at my house and I was in his arms. Sometimes that was all I needed to think about to be content with the world. Amy gave me the last swig of my tea. Tommy won't get here until late, right? I nodded. Even though he would leave straight from school, he still wouldn't get to my house until 9 or 9.30. The six-hour drive was often a very long six-hour drive. For him and for me. Ugh, I was going to say you should come to the game. I know you aren't really a football fan, but I want you to come watch me cheer. If Tommy usually doesn't get here until late, maybe you and Tony could come sometime. I'm not really a football fan either, Tony shrugged, but... We can just go and hang out, if you want. Hey, I'm not saying you have to watch the game. Let's be honest, nobody really watches the game. I'm saying come watch me. You know, that's what friends do, support each other. I would be up for that. It would give me a distraction while Tommy was on his way. You haven't seen him since homecoming, right? I nodded, grimacing. Homecoming. Oh, homecoming. The dance I used to dream about. When I told Meg how I really felt about her before Tommy and I went into the dance, I didn't realize how many people had been outside near us. I didn't really care. Meg was right in front of me, being her typical Meg self. Tommy was right there with me, and I knew he would back me up if anything backfired. I just knew it was the right time to do it. A lot of my friends used to comment on how many people would stare at me when we were out in public. They would tell me how they wanted to go beat that guy up or smack that girl in the face. I didn't really know if it was because I wasn't eye-level with most people or that I was so used to it from growing up in a wheelchair, but either way, I never seemed to notice. At homecoming, however, the staring would have been obvious to a two-year-old. I couldn't tell if it was because I was with a guy and not an adult, or if it was because I had just told my best friend off a few minutes earlier. Probably a mixture of both. Hey, Amy had come over to us in her little black dress. She had requested to be my friend on Facebook a few months before the dance, and for some reason, I accepted her. And at that time, she had become my one and only lunch buddy at school. You don't look so hot. Well, you do look hot, very hot, but you look like you're hearing what people are saying. Don't listen to them. You know they're jackasses. I didn't know the words that accompanied the stares, and I didn't want to. Tommy and Amy exchanged introductions. I was glad. I wanted them to meet. If you guys want to go, I wouldn't blame you. Why be here when you don't want to be? I'll message you later. After we debated if we should stay, Tommy and I decided to go back to my house. My mom helped me get out of my dress, which was starting to become extremely itchy anyway, and into my comfy pajamas. Although I usually had to get in bed right before my parents did, Tommy and I wanted to stay up and chat. Understanding that this was the first time we had seen each other since Camp Lakewood, my mom agreed to let him put me in bed whenever we were ready, if he promised to go straight into the guest bedroom afterwards. So, I have something to tell you. He had quietly closed the door and had taken a seat on my bed. I pulled up to him so he could see my techno talk screen. I didn't want to tell you right away because I could already just tell how you were, and I knew you would fall in love with me without even knowing me. <laughs> 